Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to BFW 2401, uh, week nine, and we are talking about uh, market risk. Now, uh, market risk is actually related to the trading book of the bank. And when we say trading book, that means we have banking book. So the banking book is those assets which we keep to maturity, like loans. And the trading book are those type of financial securities uh, which we use, uh, which we uh, trade in daily basis, in hourly basis, intraday basis. So you can talk about stock, you can talk about bonds, you can talk about derivatives, you can talk about commodities, and you can talk about any other financial securities. Uh, and therefore, um, the way I, I, uh, I plan this lecture is I divide it into two parts. Now, in the first part, we will talk about uh, uh, the introduction and uh, of, of this issue of market risk. It has nothing to do now with loans because the bank now is acting as um, um, an investment company, as an institutional investor, as uh, Purely an investor has nothing to do with loans and banks and whatever and and, and uh, um, loans and all those type of uh, you know long term assets, but very very short ter term assets and liabilities. Uh, so I divided this two the lecture into two parts. The first part I will talk about the introduction, and the second part I will talk about the measurements and some other issues uh, of of. Uh, 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 of market uh, risk. So if you allow me now to share my screen, I will start with this first part. And the first part is, is here. So this is the first part. And you can see now we are talking about um, this area, as you can see, which is actually uh, the market risk. Now, um, as you remember now in week seven and week eight, we um, talked about um, the credit risk, which is the first part of the assets, which is actually coming under the banking book. And this is actually the market risk, which is the trading book. Now to um, just to read you some information about what we are going to do, um, this is the resources. So you can find all this information in chapter uh, nine in the book, that's recommended uh, source, and it's just a market risk. You can look at that and it's very straightforward. Now let me, let me um, so this is the first part actually, we want to talk about the, we want to introduce this uh, market risk and look at the frame of, 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 of this market risk. So if you look at this, as you can see, if you, if you look at this, uh, this is if this is the balance sheet now, and if we talk about the balance sheet, we are talking about what we are talking about um, liabilities. Uh, this is just the the debit side and capital liabilities, debt, interbank, and capital. Now we are not talking about this, we are talking about the asset side. And the asset side is actually the loans, which we cover in seven and eight. And as I told you, the investment, uh, our investments, which is the trading book, uh, which is week nine. Now to make this issue more clearly, if I divide it to the balance sheets of the assets and liabilities into two parts, as you can see here, the, uh, this is the banking book which is, you can see under the assets, we have loan, premises and equipment, all of those, as you can see, is long-term. Now, these loans, we already talked about it, whether we are talking about, um, you know, um, we are talking about housing loans, business loans, personal loans, all these type of loans that will take actually and stay for a long time in our, uh, uh, in our assets. Uh, deposit still the same. We'll talk about the liquidated, um, uh, liquidated and borrowed funds. And we are talking about deposits. And of course, the capital here is coming under the liability and the equities. Now, if you look at the trading book, which is our week nine is coming in this area. And this is actually our story. So if you can see, we can go long position. This is what we call long position. 
long position, long position. So I can go bonds, long position, commodities, long position, foreign exchange or currencies, long position, equities, and derivatives. What do we mean by uh, long position? Long position is you buy the assets, as you can see, you can buy the assets and then you hold it until the price goes up. So if you have expectations of some stocks or bonds and any other financial securities, even when you do a foreign exchange or you do uh, what you call derivatives and you are hedging and trading those derivatives, you will buy them and wait until the price goes up and sell them. As you can see, we are talking now about buy and hold. And this is the asset side. And this is actually can happen. So I can buy now. And if it, when we talk about foreign exchange, you can sell even after a few hours from the trading. And we are talking about, you know, you can always update your portfolio by selling those ones anytime. Now, somebody would say, but there is something called short, which means I can go in bond long and short. Short is when we decide when the prices now are high, so you want to have an asset, you sell it down, wait until the price goes down and buy it back. And this is actually different from this. This, you buy the assets and you wait. The price here is low and you wait it until it goes up. Here, the price is high. So, but I don't have the assets. So your broker will provide you from the, uh, from the uh, he can give you, you know, lend you what we call uh, securities that you are requesting and you think they are now uh, overpriced. So you take all those ones and you sell them. And then you wait and the price goes down, you buy them back and you give them back to your broker. Now bro those brokers actually provide those margins. So when we do this issues, so you borrow and you buy, you borrow now, you sell them, and wait again and buy again when the price goes down, the prices goes down and you make a difference between what you sell down and what you buy later on. This is the whole operation in the trading book. Now, if you have all this portfolio, this is a portfolio, a market risk, and there is a department in the bank, a special, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, special department who is actually taking care of those, uh, what you call uh, uh, trading, which is different actually from the banking side, which is different from the banking book. Now, um, this issue started with, you know, um, GB Morgan is one of the top banks in the world, and we have all those talented um, CEOs. So uh, actually during uh, <clears throat> this, uh, you know, previous, um, uh, Sir Dennis um, uh, Witherstone, he, he was the head of GB Morgan and he wanted to have, look, he wanted to have position for his trading book in every day, end of every day. Remember when we, did, when, we, when we did market risk, when we did credit risk, we just measure it maybe every three months or every year or every six months. This market risk, market risk because of this uh, risk, you know, um, coming and going every day um, and the positions that change every day, um, you need um, end of day uh, position, whether you are making losses or gains end of the day, and what is the losses or the gains on your portfolio, and you won't need that in daily basis. But now you have so much of them. So you have my, all of those assets and liabilities. So you will provide, you know, uh, what we call a portfolio for them to bar, to measure that risk. And we call it risk matrix. So the risk matrix actually is our subject in, in this class. So we want actually to talk about the risk matrix, which means we will do develop a risk for all of our holdings and see our position. Now, uh, when, uh, when, when, when Jamie Dimon, which is the current uh, J.B. Morgan uh, CEO, a very famous guy, has been in this position for a long time, very successful man, he also followed this issue and provide, and they developed what, you call, what we call today, the DEER. So what is the DIR? DIR is actually the daily earning at risk, which means the position in that day. 
and you want to have a daily earning, you want to have a daily earning at risk every day for each item or for each class of assets, which means now we call it the DIR. So the DIR actually is one day position for each class. And then when you collect all of those ones and you want to measure them, they will be, you will have a risk matrix for one day for all those assets. Now, the issue is how are we going to do it? Um, this is what we are going to talk about in the second part. But in this part, I want to tell you that uh, this is the my agenda. Uh, so in this, those slides all actually can be introduction. And my agenda is to uh, uh, introduce this mar market risk and how does it come? Then we'll talk about the market risk measurement. S basically, we'll talk about the risk matrix model and it has some problems and weaknesses. So we will move to something else called um, the the historical or back simulation. So risk, mat risk matrix is one uh, model, and then we have the historical or back simulation approach, and then we have the Monte Carlo uh, simulation approach, and we have the regulatory models, which is, is the BIS. BIS is Bank of International Settlement uh, uh, Framework. Now I don't know whether we are going to cover this. Uh, we don't need to, um, to worry a lot about this regulatory model, um, but we will go over it anyways. But the most important thing we want to look is about those three issues. Now, um, as I told you, why market risk come to the picture? Market, when you are holding bonds or stocks or derivatives or all those type of financial securities, in the market, there will be three changes, either the interest rate risk, which will affect actually the prices of your holdings. So it will affect the bonds, it will affect the, uh, uh, the interest rate. Also, we will have problem with the interest rate risk. So uh, interest rate risk and foreign exchange risk is two drivers of the changes of our portfolio or the price risk that we may face and also something else called the equities. So changes in interest rate risk or foreign exchange risk or volatility in the market, the equity market, that will affect actually our holding. Um, it can be measured, as I told you, as, as short as one day, which we call it the DIR, and uh, usually measured in terms of dollars. So we would say our exposures in foreign exchange risk is such such dollars. Uh, our exposure and um, bonds, uh, we will lose such and such. And then in the portfolio, we will, we will say, this is the value of our portfolio. And this is what we, the maximum thing that we can lose. So as I told you, the, uh, the emphasis is on the measurement of the exposure. exposure. Um, we were also on the control mechanism for direct credit risk and uh, uh, employees credit risk, uh, created risk. Employees means the traders. The traders who make the trading for our, uh, 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 so direct market risk is actually, and employees market risk is actually, this is the trading risk by the employees and the market risk that is coming uh, from, from the market itself and how we deal with it. And then we will talk a little about the um, hedging mechanism. Uh, let me move here now to Um, so why market risk measurement is important? It's important because of management information. So if I know my position by the end of the day, I can take action, which means can, I can update uh, and I can uh, you know, uh, uh, restructure my portfolio. Um, also, when I know the market risk, uh, I can make what we call, what we call setting a risk limits. So when we talk about risk limits, we are talking about um, if I have some type of bonds or some type of securities, say I have uh, some type of, of stock that is, uh, which has very high volatility. So maybe the prices goes minimum to eight and maximum to 13. 
So in this case, I will say that when the when the prices goes to uh, when the prices goes to uh, eight, that is the limit where I should buy. And when the prices goes to thirteen, this is the limit where I can sell. So I will if I know actually if I study market risk and I know and I have studied the volatility of this stock. I'm talking just about one. Uh, type of, of, of investment, which is um, stock for one company like SimeJB, whatever. Uh, so in this case, I, I'm studying the volatility of that one, and I can model it, which means I can put the upper limit and the lower limit. And therefore, I know when I can go short, and I know when I can go long. So um, uh, resources allocation. Um, so if I know what is the best that um, um, uh, if I know the, the 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 risks, then I will put my assets in a portfolio that actually give me the minimum risk and give me the maximum uh, uh, return for that uh, minimum risk. Now uh, we want to also to evaluate the performance and evaluate how are those traders. When we say traders, because when you are in a bank, you have traders. You know, you are people who are working in. Um, government securities, people who are working, there is specialization. If you talk about a company like Goldman Sachs, they have around 36,000 employees. We call them 30, 36,000 traders. All of those, every trader is working with so many investors and they keep doing all this trading. And also we need this information for the regulators. So this is why we need to measure the market risk. As I told you, this is the three types which we do the measurement, which is the risk matrix, uh, historic or back simulation and Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, this is the framework. Now, when we say the framework, we will talk about it in part two, but in this part, it's very important that we know what we are doing. So actually we are talking about, uh, this is the risk matrix and the risk matrix, as you remember, we are interested to follow a deer which is daily uh, earning at risk. So the DIR, when we calculate the DIR, we have to calculate first fixed income. We will have um, um, DIR for the fixed income, uh, what we call uh, uh, a class. When we say fixed income, we are talking about corporate bond, government bonds, uh, treasuries, uh, all of those actually are coming under what we call the uh, the fixed income type of securities. And then we will go to, and we have to do follow up a deal for that one. And there is a, a formula for this, which is the uh, price volatility. We need to bring how much are we investing? What is the dollar exposure for that one? And how much is the price volatility? And the price volatility is actually the modified duration times the potential adverse uh, change in yield in one day, and I will show you how we calculate this and how we calculate this, and we get the price volatility. When we get the price volatility, we just multiply it. Say if we are investing around 100 million in this, and the price volatility make it 2%, then I know that the maximum I can lose in one day is 2 million. Uh, then we have the risk matrix, which is the, we, we, then we have the, uh, uh, the what we call uh, uh, income, uh, this is the fixed income security, which is coming here. And then we have for the Forex. Now the Forex is, we just take the dollar position and the volatility of that exchange rate. That's all. And we get the deal. Uh, for equities, we get also the dollar value, which is our investment in here and the uh, equities uh, times the stock market volatility. And we get the deal. Then we have to connect this deal with this deal with this deal which is the fixed income, the foreign exchange, the equities, and provide what we call the uh, portfolio aggregation. Now, the portfolio aggregation is this thing, which is called the risk matrix. Now, you, you cannot add, for example, fixed income risk, risk plus foreign exchange plus foreign equities, because as I told you, interest rate risk may affect all of this. So actually, there is overlapping of those risks. If you add them up, you make um, you know, over aggregation, but actually you want to take the correlation of the risk of those assets because they are coming from the same source. And therefore the risk matrix is helping us 
and building that risk. So what we do, we have to do follow this, uh, what we call formula. And in this formula, you can see there is here a correlation. So here, if you have two assets or three assets, you have a correlation and that correlation actually take care of this overlapping. This is the whole thing about the Rx matrix. We just want to know how to uh, you know, uh, see the um, uh, risk uh, and for our exposure and fixed income, foreign exchange for equities. Here we have three classes. We can bring equities, we can bring commodities, but for the sake of this discussion of week nine, and you will be responsible only about that, is to talk about three uh, class, uh, three classes of assets. Now, when we are done with risk matrix, this risk matrix, because of this correlation, which is very difficult. Now we are talking about two assets and it's very complicated to calculate it. When we are talking about 10 assets, 20 assets, if you are talking about 966 stocks in militia, for example, in the stock here, and if you want to, to include them all in your portfolio, what about if you want to include all those type of currencies? What about you know bonds? So if you have you know hundreds of hundreds of assets and you want to run those correlation, is just crazy thing. So they develop something called historic or back simulation, which is actually easier than this one. And actually we'll talk, for example, if we are you know, uh, taking a confidence of 95%. So we will take all 500 days and this 500 days, we will take the worst five, uh, 25 days, which represents 5% of the 500 days. And we see what is the stress during those uh, 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 25 days. We add them and we call them the bar, the value at risk using this historic back simulation. And they will show you this in part two. But they say, well, 500 days actually is not very, um, does not express uh, what we expect in the future because we are calculating now in the risk, the risk in the future using those information in the past. They say 500 days may not enough to reflect, uh, you know, and give us good forecast about what's going to happen later on. So they developed something called Monte Carlo simulation, which means you bring this 500, uh, uh, what we call uh, um, observations to 20,000, or you take this variance covariance uh, correlations and the, the, the matrix will work like this. And then you will you can simulate and produce uh, 10,000 uh, what you call observation or 20,000 observations and do your forecasting and, and, and then calculate the VAR, which is the uh, 500, uh, the 5% of this uh, 20,000 observations, which is actually created by the simulation. Uh, and then we have what, uh, this is the Monte Carlo simulation. And then, as I told you, we'll talk about the regular models. Regular three models actually is not much of our concern, but it is coming from the BIS, which is Bank of International Settlement, who are interested uh, about, you know, the safety and the financial safety of the system. Uh, that's all, and we will, I will see you in part two. Thank you very much. And let me just end this and say thank you. I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.